Hello and welcome to episode 28 of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. I'm Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting, crochet and making all the things here in North West London. You can find me online on Twitter and Instagram at hippie underscore Nikki. I'm on Ravelry as Nikki Hippie and if you search for Tea and Possibilities under the groups tab on Ravelry you'll be able to find our group right there. For all the show notes you can go to my blog and the link to that and everything else I've just mentioned will be just down below. As always, I would like to say a massive welcome to any new viewers. I always really appreciate you giving the podcast a shot. And to my returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you coming back every single week. I really, really do. It's been a couple of weeks since I podcasted. I fully intended to last weekend while Rich was away. Um, but unfortunately, the weather... Well, unfortunately, the weather was good. That's said no one ever. Um, but that did mean that um, a lot of the neighbours were having barbecues and there was a lot of quite loud music. Um, because of where I podcast, I'm quite near the garden. And so I just couldn't get good audio quality. Um, so I decided if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> and I went out and enjoyed the sunshine myself. Um, I'm really sorry about that. Um, I think we should be okay at the moment because I'm just peeking out and it's pretty grey. It looks like it's going to rain. So <laughs> we've had a really beautiful week um, and hopefully if it does rain it'll only be today, not Sunday as well. Um, today's tea, nearly forgot to mention, is um, some more of the White Monkey that I got from Peco Tea in Edinburgh. So this is a green tea. It's been kind of a very green tea heavy week because it's been so hot. For some reason I haven't fancied um, black teas, um, like a traditional builder's tea, which I usually have in the morning when I get to work, or Earl Grey, which I tend to have throughout the day. Um, it's just been too hot and those feel like autumnal, you know, winter, springtime, cool day drinks. So green tea has just been really refreshing and lovely to have um, during this absolutely beautiful heat wave we've been having. Just a really quick reminder that pen pals have opened up again. You have till the end of June, so Friday, June the 30th, to send me a message on Ravelry. Um, only on Ravelry, I said last week that I I'm having some weird trouble with Instagram um, messages, so please do only send um, me a message on Ravelry if you want to take part in the pen pal um, draw, purely because then I've got them all in one place and it's a lot easier for me to do. What you need to send me is your real name, your address, and whether or not you are happy to post abroad. I will do my best to pair you up at home or abroad. Obviously this depends on who throws that hat into the ring. So if I can't give you your first preference, I will message you to let you know that before I pair you up. Um, but yes, so this is our last week of um, availability to sign up. And then I will pair you up in the first week of July. It's been a bit of a funny old week this week. Um, I've had a bit of an unlucky week, which is why I'm wearing my lucky necklace to try and get some positivity back. Um, I kicked off the week by going to donate blood, and unfortunately they couldn't find a vein, so when they put the needle in they missed, and I'm really not very good with needles at all. I really don't like them, I have to look away, um, and I'm always very glad to get out of there afterwards, so I was quite uncomfortable <laughs> by that. Um, so I have to rebook that for a couple of weeks time or when I can next get an appointment. Um, and then on Wednesday, I got stung by a wasp. So it's just, it's just not my lucky week. Um, I've never been stung before in my life. Um, and I know that it's supposed to hurt atrociously. Um, and I just thought I was being poked through my um, leggings by a sharp bit of grass and I reached down to kind of pull it out of my leggings and out crawled a wasp from under my leg. Um, and it didn't really hurt apart from that initial sting. And I thought, oh, I don't know, don't know why people say it hurts so much. I can't have been stung properly because it doesn't hurt. Um, fast forward to a couple of hours later and I was in quite a lot of pain. So yeah, unlucky is the word. 
it's fine now, I've got a little bit of a bruise and that's all. But yeah, I've really been on the sharp end of the stick this week. Um, don't know why, I've just been a little bit unlucky. <laughs> Uh, as you may be able to tell by the fact that I've got um, a dress on, well you can't tell it's a dress can you from there, um, but it is, it's a new dress. Um, and I've got some lipstick on, I am doing that thing that I do where I try to cram in podcasting before I go out. Uh, as I said, it's been a really beautiful week, um, so we're hoping that tomorrow is going to be beautiful as well so we can spend Sunday outside enjoying the sunshine. And today I'm catching up with an old friend. I think we're going to go and see Wonder Woman. So I'm really excited about that. But in the meantime, let's move straight on to Whipped Up. This week's Whipped Up is fairly light on content, purely because, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, it's been quite warm here. Um, one of my kind of pet peeves, I guess you would say, is this idea that England is a relentlessly cold, wet and grey country, because it is not. Um, we have some really beautiful seasons, and yes, it rains a bit, um, and January in particular can be very grey and rainy and horrible, frankly. January is not my favourite month. But our summers are usually quite nice. We do occasionally have terrible ones. <laughs> We have had some pretty terrible summers, um, but we are very lucky this year and we are having a fantastic and glorious heat wave and it's been beautiful. And that is why I have been going to the park on my lunch breaks to have my lunch, um, which is how I got stung by a wasp, um, the joys of nature. <laughs> and you know, I've been going out on the weekends and just trying to enjoy it as much as possible because God knows I can't sleep because it's too hot. So. <laughs> I've been just trying to get out and enjoy it as much as possible because much as this isn't a relentlessly grey, cold and rainy country, we do not have relentlessly sunshiny, beautiful hot weather either, so I want to enjoy it while I can. The weather has meant that knitting time has been limited. Um, it's been so hot that it just gets a bit uncomfortable after a while to knit too much because your hands get kind of sticky and it's just not fun. Um, which is a shame, but I have still been working on things. I mentioned, I think last episode, that I'm on a little bit of a hat kick. Um, the reason for this um, is partly because they're very small, they're portable, they're easy to work on, and you can get loads of different designs and different patterns, and they knit up fairly quickly. Or they would if it wasn't boiling hot. But you, you get my drift. But the other reason I am knitting hats is because they are my piece of love and positivity that I'm trying to put out into the world. Sadly, I have had cause over the last few episodes to talk about some really horrible things that are happening in the world, and here in London in particular. Um, these have been terrorist attacks, of which there was another one recently, which absolutely breaks my heart. And there are other things happening, like the Grenfell Tower blaze, um, which you've no doubt seen on the news and it is absolutely horrific what happened there. Um, and as I have said before on this podcast, I want this to be a place of happiness and love and positivity, but by the same token, I don't want to look away from the often tragic realities of the world. So to combat this, if you go to the Tea and Possibilities group, you will find there a thread called the Charity Bat Signal. And this is where I am keeping all of your suggestions for knitting charities. So as you suggest them to me, I will add them to the first post. This way, if you have, you know, some scrap yarn that you want to make up into a blanket, if you've got um, an overdose of shawls and you want to donate some, you can go there and it's in the very first um, post so you won't have to hunt through the thread. Then, should anything happen, like, for example, the Grenfell Tower incident, um, we can put in a comment below that to talk about things that are happening now um, that need local help. So that is what I did. I put out a message beneath that in a second post just to say they're looking for donations, here are what they're looking for in particular, and here is where you can donate. Again, 
This is all just to make it easier for everyone to grab any information should they be in a position to help at that time. At the moment, I feel very much that I want to hold my loved ones really close. I want them to know that I love them. I want to feel that I am taking care of the people around me. And I'm doing that by making hats. So the very first hat I made and that kind of inspired this was for a very dear friend of ours who is allowing us to have her flat when she moves. So that is all ready to go. Um, she's probably going to receive it a little later than intended because we are now having to move a little bit later, but it's ready to go and I am so, so pleased that when she moves abroad, she will have this hat with her, knowing that we love, appreciate and will miss her. My first hat is already cast on and is living in the little bag that Odd Knits Adventures sent me, uh, which I love and is really handy for just keeping my hat and all the bits and pieces I need and throwing it into my handbag. And this is my first hat. This is the Graham hat by Jennifer Adams. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. And I have knit this before in a Jill Draper Make Stuff yarn, I think, in brown, really beautiful brown for rich. And this, um, because as well as a hat kick, I'm on a Mad Tosh kick, um, is Madeline Tosh in the Rain Water colorway. I can't, I think this is the worsted weight Madeline Tosh. Um, I don't have the label to hand, and I got various weights, but I think this is the um, worsted weight. And this is just a really simple hat. Um, as you can see, we've got the rib. Yes, I use the German twisted rib cast on because I am obsessed. Uh, but there's the ribbing. And this bit here is broken ribbing, so you can probably see better on the other side that it's got this kind of broken moss stitch almost. And it's really intuitive, I'm just going round and round and round, nice and easy. But look at this yarn. I love Madeleine Tosh because her depth of colour is just astounding. This is not just grey. There is pops of blue in here, um, there's several shades of grey, and it's just for a fairly plain neutral, there's just so much going on in here and I think it's going to be really, really gratefully appreciated. And frankly, I would knit a garment in this colour. It's just so beautiful. Um, that's going to be a recurring theme because I think I said that about the Earl Grey colourway as well. Um, before I discovered it was being discontinued, which broke my heart. But next up, I have two luscious skeins of yarn. Aren't they beautiful? Look at them. I really like purple and yellow together. I think this yellow is just a tad too on the green side, but otherwise I think they would make something glorious in colour work. In fact, I think there's a colour work hat with little horses on in one of my pom-poms. Hmm. But anyway, <laughs> these two are also going to be hats. These are my last two hats of my hat kick. This one here is Tosh DK in the Begonia Leaf colourway. And I realised the other day when I was kind of going, oh, wouldn't this make a beautiful jumper? Um, like, I think this would actually make a really lovely soiree from the anniversary edition of Pom Pom. I realised that Amy of the Stranded podcast also had this colour and a sweater quantity. So we might end up being twinsies, colour-wise at least, um, because I just think this is beautiful. And it's not a colour I would normally wear, but I think it would suit me. And I would just love, 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 love something in this. It's just so beautiful. Um, you will notice I'm not saying who these hats are for, because I'm not sure if the people therefore watch. So I won't be mentioning who they are for until after they've been given. But I'm very excited about this one. Because this is going to be the Beeswax Hat by Amy van der Laar. And I just think it's going to be beautiful. I probably should knit it in yellow, but I just know this is going to suit the person so much better and it's gonna look glorious. This is gonna be next on my needles. 
um, after the tied knots, um, which I did in Madeleine Tosh Are Grey um, by Justina Lukowska, by the way. Um, after I did that one, I felt like I needed a bit of a break, which is why I've cast on the grey end, because it's just so intuitive, no cables, don't have to think, great part knitting. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be my next cast on, and I cannot wait. This lovely yellow is Tosh Vintage, which is a worsted weight. And I do think the grey was also Tosh Vintage, but I'd have to double check that. And this is in the Candlewick colourway. And I have to say, this is not what I thought the Candlewick colourway would be like. It has a lot more green in it. Um, it's on the greener side of yellow than I was expecting. Don't care, still think it's gorgeous. I don't think I can wear yellow, which bums me out so much. <laughs> because look at it. Look how beautiful this yellow is. I want it in a dress, I want it in a skirt, I want it in a cardigan. But I know that I would just look like I've got jaundice because I'm so pale, it would just reflect straight onto my skin. Um, which is not what you want really, but I get to nip it and that's the main thing. This will be my last hat that I'm currently planning, that is. And this is going to be the Hugo hat, also by Justina Lokowska. And I realise I'm probably completely mangling that name, but... Um, this is kind of a bright colour for the person that I'm knitting it for, but I just think it's going to look beautiful on them. So I hope, hope, hope that she will love it. That was a bit of a clue, wasn't it? She. Lastly this week, I have been working, can you believe on my Shanghai stripes. And I have been suffering for it, guys, because it's so warm. And just having this on your lap, I can do it now because it's cool, but obviously I'm going out, so, you know, ain't that always the way. <laughs> so you just kind of have it laid on your lap like this and you're working away, and it's really warm. It is such a winter project. <laughs> But I am determined that she is going to have this um, shortly after she arrives. I am determined. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just have to, you know, drink plenty of cool water. So it's doing wonders for my <laughs> H2O intake. And just hook away, hook away, hook away. And, you know, I'm getting close to the end of this repeat. And I really, I've got a week in the in June now because I really want to have this half finished by the end of June. So I need to finish this repeat of which I have got um, just this row, actually, now I'm looking at it, doesn't seem quite so bad. Um, just this row of orange to finish and then one second row of orange because I'm doing two of every colour. And then I can start the fourth repeat. So if I can get that fourth repeat finished in this week, I'm kind of on track, but I haven't checked the weather forecast. I'm just assuming that it's going to be hot, you know. I feel like I live in California, it's amazing. I have massively run out of yarn though. This blanket so far, all of this is what was left over from my Crochet Girl Gang blanket. I bought this as a colour pack um, from loveknitting.com. It was the Steel and Stitch colourway. And this was what I had left from making a whole blanket. So nearly half a second blanket was what I had left. I still have two balls of the grey left, which I'm going to use to make a border. Um, I might do grey and the dark red, I'm not sure yet, but grey will definitely be part of the border. And I've still got two balls of that left, which is insane. Um, so yeah, that was a really good buy because I got half a blanket out of it. So I bought some more. So these are all the colours that I'm using um, and they came this week. And I just got one of every colour. So I've got the mustard, um, the light orange, the dark orange, and then the sort of orangey red, and then the dark red. And hopefully, this is the second half of the blanket. I toyed with getting two balls of each, but I don't want to end up with loads and loads of leftovers again. Although it wouldn't matter because my nan has already claimed these. She loves these and she wants to make some jumpers for my friend's baby out of them. It's acrylic, so it will be super easy to care for. But we will see how much I have left because I might end up buying more. 
So yeah, that's all there is for Whipped Up this week. Um, not sure when I'm gonna head back to garment knitting. I've got my Hortensia so close to finishing. I've just got to work on the collar. And I've got my Gingerbread Jumper by Livy Johnson. I've got all of the yarn for it and I've just got to swatch for it and cast it on. But yeah, the garment mojo is not strong with me at the moment. It's just too warm to think about woolly jumpers. So yeah, for the time being, it's gonna be lots of little things, so I hope that's okay. But now, in a frankly shocking turn of events, let's move on to gold power. podcast and was going to talk about this in Knit and Natter, um, but obviously it sits better here. When I started this podcast I was a die-hard bullet journaler and a few months ago you will have seen that I was talking about potentially giving that up and then eventually I did. I moved from a hardbound bullet journal into a Kiki K ring binder planner. And the reason I did this was because I realised that planning wasn't my hobby. It was literally something I did to plan for practical purposes. And I found having to set up every month, having to make it look pretty. Um, I didn't have to make it look pretty, but I wanted it to look pretty. I just didn't have the interest in doing that. And so a fixed planner seemed better. And the ring binder idea seemed like a great idea because then I could have the diary already in there, didn't have to set anything up, and I could use other sections to bullet journal and future plan. And as you may remember, I bought this one. This beautiful, personal sized, blue leather Kiki K planner. And I'll just give you a quick flick through as a reminder. I have three sections, starting with my calendar. Those are some stickers. So the calendar, I used the month on two pages. And I also had a week on two pages, so I could fill in more detail where necessary. I then kept, I'll just find a good example, a couple of pages, a traditional bullet journal in the next section. And this is where I just wrote down to-do lists, plans for the month, things like that. This last section, which as you can see is blank, was meant to be for future planning. In here, I was going to track my finances from week to week and month to month and make plans for our new home, things like that. As you can see, I didn't get around to filling it in. And part of the reason for that is because of my experience using the planner as a bullet journal. Now, what I liked about this was there wasn't much white space. I didn't worry so much about how pretty it looked because of that, but using it was a bit of a nightmare. I'm right-handed, so writing on the right-hand side of the page, absolutely fine. Writing on the left, I just kept banging into the ring binder and it made it really uncomfortable to use. It made my handwriting bad. It meant that I couldn't fill up the page as much and I just found it quite frustrating. And I realised recently, this week in fact, that I just am not using this as much. I'm jotting down things I need to remember and it's just not planning as my bullet journal used to be. And I pulled out, here we go, my old bullet journal. This is just a hardbound, um, I call them look term notebooks, but I think they're loose term. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're really lovely hardbound notebooks. They come in lots of different colours and at the back they've got a really handy envelope. The paper is really good. It's all just lovely. And I had a flick through this. And when I first set it up, I had things like a financial tracker, where I had bar graphs, so I could fill in how much I had. I had a gift list. I had level 10 life. Um, see? Beautiful and colourful. I had planning, I drew out beautiful, um, well, plain, but colourful at least, um, month, to, uh, month at a glance, over two pages. I wrote out whole months as well, so I could give myself some more detail and plan a bit better. And then there's my beautiful bullet journaling. Colourful, fun, really, really good. 
And I looked at that and was like, why did I stop doing that? Like, I think I just made it too complicated. So, I think that I'm giving up ring binders permanently. I think I'm going back to bullet journaling. I am the proud owner of, I think, two or three Filofaxes as well as this one. So I think now that I know for definite that this doesn't work for me, I am going to fish those out along with this and pop them on eBay. They're not going to be something I use again, and it just seems silly to hang on to them. In the meantime, I have picked up a brand new notebook in this gorgeous bright purple and I'll be setting that up as soon as I can. I always get them dotted because I find that works better for me, gives me clear lines to write on, makes drawing out charts and things like that a lot easier. And I'm going to have a good think about this and I'm probably gonna fill it out with post-its first. <laughs> but I think what I'm gonna do is, starting at the front, I'm going to fill out the next 12 months. So July to June 2018. And I'm going to draw them out over two pages and that is going to be my diary. It's going to have plenty of room for notes, for reminders, for birthdays, for plans, things I have to remember. I'm then going to have a financial tracker. Um, I think it'd be quite nice to have flat plans, things I need to do for our new home, anything like that, things I want to do for the channel. And they're all going to be at the front. I am then going to flip it and use the back to do my bullet journaling. This way, I never really used the index, which the bullet journal relies quite heavily on. And I found it quite annoying to have like loads of bullet journaling and then a big few planning pages and then a month um, planner and, and things like that. Uh, I find that annoys me. I like having things very neatly placed. So if I put my calendar at the front, that makes sense. If I then put regular check-in trackers, like financial tracker, things to do for the flat tracker, things like that. At the front, that makes sense. And they can continue to grow as they need to, and they'll have space with nothing cutting them up in between. When I then flip it over and work upside down from the back on my bullet journaling, I can see all of my notes, my to-dos, all in one place, and eventually they will meet in the middle. And I'm fine with that and I'll just move into another one. But this, I think, could be the solution. I just need to get over this idea that it's got to be beautiful. What I need is practical. I found in my Kiki K using highlighters um, made me quite happy, so I think that's what I'll do with this. I'm going to sit and draw out, just in black pen, um, some planners, so for the month, for money, for all of that kind of stuff. I'll use highlighters for my bullet journal, so I can just highlight the date and things like that to make it a little bit more colourful. And I'm going to try and be happy with that. <laughs> Instead of, oh, it needs to be beautiful, but I don't want to spend time making it beautiful. And yeah. And I need to get back into the habit of checking in every evening, writing my notes and doing things like that. Something else that I used to really like doing in my bullet journal was every sort of couple of weeks, maybe once a month or so, just filling out what I'm currently working on. These are my current whips. Okay, right, how much work needs to be done on these? Right, what should I work on first? Where do I need to be monogamous to get this done? Um, and that's quite nice because I do get a little bit anxious when I have too many things on the needles. So yeah, this is going to track my knitting as well. As always, I would love to know what works for you. Do you prefer a ring binder? Do you prefer a notebook that you set up yourself? Do you prefer just buying a diary at the beginning of every year? How do you use it? How does it work for you? What works, what doesn't? I love hearing about it. I love reading Boho Berry's blog. I follow Little Ray of Sunshine on Instagram. These are both great people if you love bullet journaling or planning of any kind, really. I think you can enjoy a different kind of planning if that is the kind of thing you enjoy looking at. I would love to hear about it. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing if I can maybe use this to get more knitting done as well. And it's a beautiful purple, which I love. Purple and green, favorite colors. So it'll just add to my set. <laughs> 
But that's it for this week. Um, there's no knit and natter. I think I've nattered quite enough um, for one week. And I'm getting lots of weird flashing symbols on the camera that I've never seen before and I don't understand. And it's probably telling me that it's too hot as well. So <laughs> there you go. I hope you have an absolutely lovely week. I hope you have beautiful weather or whichever weather you desire. I hope you get lots of knitting done and I'll see you next week for another cup of tea. Take care. Bye.